Nao, 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 Nao. Hey, you come over here. This is WEMF Radio. Radio Now. Welcome. We're live. That's right. The, the Young, Young Jerks. Jerks on WEMFRadio.com. And this is your host, Mike Can, and sitting next to me for the first time in several weeks. That's right. I took back a from hiatus. vacation. Where were you? Hiatus? I was on a sabbatical. Sabbatical. You were vacation, a family I... vacation with your uh, Sarah. Yep. And family. your son, Benny. Yep. Family trip. Yep. What's going on? Something's going on back Uh-oh. there. Oh, you, you got the stream running on your uh, your computer. Oh, my stream ah. is running. Oh no, that's funny. My stream's hanging out. Yeah, I'm listening to the radio show as it's going on. I'm <laughs> sorry about that. Let me uh, turn excuse me, on. caller. Can you turn down your radio? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> WEMF Radio. We listen to ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Young Jerks. This is Mike Can, and uh, as I said, Frank Capone is finally back. Thank yes, God. It's good to be back. Thank you. And uh, we missed you because the last two weeks we had some big shows. We were talking about Market Basket yep. and crazy, and, and a lot of listeners. You, you were gone, so I had to kind of reintroduce you to the audience. Maybe I was watching it from afar. I was I was in the middle of nowhere though in Maine, so I had very little uh, access to the outside world. <laughs> you were like doing the Unabomber thing for two weeks. I was in a shack writing on a typewriter, <laughs> and uh, man, am I pissed. <laughs> So you're back, and uh, this week we're. Sp- I mean, we put out the promo for what we were doing today, and it looked like a huge show. And I think I still think it's a big show, but uh, we were promoting that we were going to have state senator Bob Headland on. Yep, um, and unfortunately, he uh, was not able to make it. What happened with that? Uh, I mean, honestly, it uh, it was. I think. Partially my fault. Uh, really? Yeah, you know. I was I mean, on you. You said you confirmed. Yeah, no, and and, and there was a confer- confirmation, but then uh, ended up being where he, he wasn't able to do it. Um, I did. They, are you sure he didn't get scared by like that? You know, he, he's got me here with with the other dude that's coming ah, in. Chris no, Ferone. I, I know Bob. He's a Chris Ferone. I killed Breitbart. I mean, maybe he yeah, was afraid uh, nah. that I killed Breitbart was going to take care of him today. I don't think so. No? I think he'll come on. Okay, we'll yeah. see. We can have Farone probably on too. Well, well Again, maybe we'll see when we get him on. But no, it was just uh, it was a scheduling mix up, and, and we're going to get him on soon. Okay, so we apologize to our listeners on that, but uh, we still have a big guest today. Oh yeah, absolutely. If we can get him in the room, a heavyweight. He's uh, he's brought us a bunch of food. Like the, first of all, like he he went over to the best place, get, uh, Veggie Galaxy in Central Square, and brought us a bunch of food. Never had it before. And very good. I Very thought tasty. I was eating meat. Yeah, we had the uh, Reuben. It was an unbelievable thing. No meat in it. Unbelievable. The fries, oh, with the gravy and good stuff. Veggie, Gal- Veggie Galaxy in Central Square. Definitely check them out. Yeah, I think I definitely will check them out. And that was uh, Chris Ferrone, who is the news editor at Dig Boston. And that was a gift certificate to Dig. You know, Dig Boston giving that to us today, which is cool. Sweet. Yeah. That's awesome. So um, thank you. Yeah, awesome. And uh, Farone's in the studio. He, he's he in the came house in, somewhere. but like he's so popular, like he just keeps running around the building, like talking to people and socializing. He's a man in demand. He might have gotten he, black bagged. I don't know. Yeah, he might have got black bagged, but he's probably working on a venture capital like project like to present sort of news. <laughs> you know, you know, like he's got a pie present, shot in the hallway. Out yeah, and he's uh, talking to somebody about it. Street news, how to fund it. Like he <laughs> he gets it done. The dude's always working on something. So. He'll be coming up soon. We're going to have him on the show. We're going to talk about his uh, his latest article for Esquire magazine. Great article, actually. I read it, and I was like, wow, this is the best explanation of what's going on. Related to Market, market basket. basket. Exactly. And it's, uh, you know, if you look at this, this article for Chris Farone that he wrote, the last stand for the middle class has taken place in a parking lot in Massachusetts is the name of it. If you don't know it, you should definitely check it out because we'll be talking about that article upcoming. And uh, we'll speak into him much more because he just did step in the studio. Ladies and gentlemen, he's here. Yeah, well, he's here. He's also my boss over at Dick Boston. You know that, Frankie? Is that a fact? Yeah. Oh, I did know that. Yeah. Boss man? Did he say boss? Can I yeah. refer to you as Haas for the rest of the, uh, <laughs> the, rest of the interview here? It, does, it says boss over my desk. <laughs> <laughs> a picture of John Wayne. <laughs> 
really? I don't know. I, I don't know why that came to mind. Charlie. He's involved in the story that I'm writing about. No, what story is that? Uh, it's, it, I'll say. I'll talk about it. It's like, uh, so I, I, a couple months ago, I traveled to, uh, hi, everybody, by the way. Chris Verone here. I, uh, I traveled to Oregon for this. Uh, I'm still working on this story, and I don't know where it's going to go. So I've been floated between a few different outlets, and the story's taken a bunch of shapes. But basically, it's about SWAT teams foreclosing on people. So like in these these ghost towns. What? Yeah, they get, it's, a, it's a oh dude, it's as complicated as it gets. But basically, yeah. So uh, this this one, uh, it, it's somebody I know through a through a friend. Uh, it's a house that they bought in 1990 for seventy five thousand dollars. It's been through I, I, by a conservative estimate, they've paid about three hundred fifty thousand dollars for this house. It's uh, meanwhile, it's been owned from everyone from you know this slimy lender to that slimy lender. Citigroup owned it. And it's all robo signing, man. It's all it's all baloney, and uh, I've proven it. But it, it also includes, you know, these sheriffs, these tough oath keeping sheriffs. They, mm-hmm. uh, they, you know, I'm a, they, uh, if Obama wants my guns, I'm going to keep like, uh, and they get standing uh, standing o- ovations. But meanwhile, when it comes down to it, these sheriffs are like really serving the man, dude. They're 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 busting down people's doors for what? For the prudential for. You know, for these giant uh, for AIG City Corp. Yeah, for city for city those, financial. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, it's it's a disgusting story. But uh, wait, how did we get into this? Uh, what, what came up? <laughs> Sasquatches. They're involved too. Yes. So the, boss John the, Wayne. Yeah, John, John Wayne. Wayne. So okay. So check this out. <laughs> so John, John Wayne. <laughs> so the the sheriff in this te- in this uh, in this county, it's Josephine County, Oregon. His name is Gil Gilbertson. <laughs> All right, and Gil Gilbertson <laughs> has a picture of John Wayne <laughs> over his desk, and uh, and uh, the reason is that John Wayne filmed the sequel to True Grit, which is of course Rooster Cogburn on the river, on the uh, Rogue River, which goes through this county. So this guy kind of fashions himself John Wayne. So I'm like, you know, I have this whole, you know, it looks like this guy might be coming around. So I'm glad that the story hasn't come out yet. But you know, the whole idea when I first went into it. Uh, at least when he seemed like a villain, was like, you know, John Wayne would never do that. You know? <laughs> and, uh, you know, as far as the that's been on it. But uh, it's inter- it's an interesting, uh, I'll tell you this. You guys, you two especially, I'm serious, would love it out there. Because politics, you know, the way, like, can people even figure you out? It's like, you know, Capone especially. <laughs> it's like, what the hell are you? You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And, and of it's course, hard. you know, you all know when I when I was uh, tripping and I ran into him at the Republican <laughs> National Convention and, like, had no idea what planet I was on. I, I, I had to pinch myself. But but anyway, long story short, Oregon, let me just put, uh, you had, uh, they, in the same election that I was there for when I was covering this story, they passed a ban on GMOs on growing them and this was like something that everyone from like gun toting weed farmers to like oath keeping libertarians agreed on they were like you know in solidarity on this meanwhile the county which lost 75% of its uh, police force uh, last year and where they actually can't respond to 911 calls on the weekends they couldn't they didn't approve like this modest tax hike to get them like basic security you know what i mean it's basically like all your like in my opinion all of like your ideals and principles like come crashing down on a you know small municipality in 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 bankruptcy but that's another story altogether do you say it in terms of like taxation yeah i mean nobody wants to pay a thing they had timber revenue it's like anarchy out there well check it out though they had timber revenue so uh 70 of the land out there is federal land Mm -hmm. and forever i mean forever like more than 100 years and there's a million stories within this uh, it was called they're the ONC counties, the Oregon and California, and it was where the railroad was built. And all those counties are, you know, 70, 80 percent timberland. Uh, well, you know, obviously they cut the hell out of all those forests. Well, the old growth, as they call it. Uh, but people, you know, were used to never paying taxes and having everything. I mean, the roads, if you drive out there. It's beautiful. It's a libertarian's nightmare. It's like everything you're, it's all federal. It's one federal, federally <laughs> built bridge you're after another. Reserve. But it's gorgeous. I mean, like, really, you, and you think, like, wow, like in the 1950s, they were like drilling through these mountains. It's unbelievable. And it's like, it'll bring a tear to your eye. And then, uh, but then now they don't have any money anymore because there's no more federal land to cut down, cut on. So now what my story ultimately boils down to is now it's a race for the private land. So the reason that this this house was foreclosed on the guy who's trying to buy it, you know, this is like uh, now you can mow, you can cut down the trees on the. It's the Lorax, dude. It's Lorax. it's the Lorax with meth. <laughs> but anyway, I, I digress. 
the Lorax with meth. But it seems like there is a lot of the government trying to take people's property land. There is. And and there's a whole, you know, I got to say it's being out there with these people. It's really amazing. And you got a lot of, you get a lot of like really people who don't have good advice for them. You know what I mean? And I don't want to like pigeonhole any groups. And, and, and in all honesty, if we're talking about the tea party in general, I'd say that's almost like a good advice group compared to a lot of the <laughs> crap. No, I'm fringe. serious. Yeah, you get a lot of the fringe. real fringe. And, and I got to say, oh, it's so, it's so enticing. Some of this stuff, I'm sure you've all heard, read about like, you know, the whole, uh, what is it? Land, uh, uh, you know, you know, the other rights to li- like your real rights to your land, like your land deed. Oh, you know, the, the Treaty of Paris and all that stuff. I, I don't know. I don't know. So- yeah, are we talking about sovereigns? Yeah, no, yeah, no. It's all based out of the whole sovereign. Oh, is that where it all philosophy. comes out of? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah where, so it's like because the land that was the United States land that was deeded to, I think it was England. Like the the way that that deed worked, and then the way that the Treaty of Paris worked. There's all these different weird little like things where if you they all might be true right exactly but like and and you when know, you try to exercise them it's not going to stop the SWAT team from especially one person especially one person at a time when, when yeah. the general public doesn't agree with you that's the difference with like something with marijuana when you fight a medical marijuana case the jury agrees with you and that's how you win you know the sovereign case you look at it's no one in the jury agrees with you. <laughs> no, they think you're crazy. Well, you're not even supposed to have a jury. It's like there's a well, whole process where you, I know, you step onto the other side. Let's of the look at reality. Though. You got, you, let's you, look at reality. No, the thing is, these like, sovereign like, citizens, one of them, they were convicted by a fucking jury. Yeah, yeah, my yeah, language. yeah. But this, that's who they were convicted by. But they didn't you're do it right. You're facing a jury. Well, uh, you can't do it right. No, no let's look at reality. No, that's there's what I'm magic language. You're talking about magic language, and I'm talking about look at reality. You know, I remember. I remember. I know. Absolutely. I remember. Like, I'm sure you. Everybody listening remember is uh and no matter what state you lived in everybody was so well versed right probably in state law when you were like in high school it's like dude if they pull us over and they search the driver you know they can't search anybody else in the car if they yeah. didn't have anything on it it's like and i remember one time i like asked my dad that and he and he just looked at me he's like how about this? Here, tell your friends this. If you get pulled over, the cop will do whatever the goddamn hell he wants to you. You know what I mean? Like and they will. That's the real rule. And then if you yeah. want to go to court after and spend a lot of money and time and try to fight it, that's you American, might win. American but justice. And most people don't. Most people give in. It's a it's a big thing to face the court. You know, no, to face ridiculous. the police. Well, and then that's what you know. So basically, I'm, as I'm watching the story unfold in Oregon, and uh, you know, it all it all depends on uh, they find now they got this one guy. He's a uh, it's it's funny. he's a he's a it's an honorable dude. He's a served in the army, national guard, actually on the east coast, and he 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 saw the cause, and he he seen he is now looking at it laid out the way I have, where it's like oh my, you know, it's like first of all, the first guy that lent money for this house, okay, oh, but when I say house, and I don't mean to insult that, it's really it's really a shack. It's 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 the land that they're after. It's sixty acres, and uh, when you look at it. The first guy who lent them the money ended up going down for racketeering. <laughs> and for instead of, you know, when, when somebody has a major scam going on uh, on a lot of uh, levels, you know, let's say let's say Mike is scamming on like 30 houses. Right. They bust you. They just bust you and they bust you for like five of them. And those are the case ones. Right. Then you have all these other properties that go into default. Now, tell me, do you think the state of Oregon went to these people and said, well, you've already paid ninety thousand dollars on a seventy five thousand dollar house? Here, here's your deed. No, no, no. It gets kicked into this disgusting thing. And if there are people out there, this is something that, like, even like conspiracy theorists, I, I don't, I've never even heard people complain about this. Of course, maybe you two have. Uh, Vendorscape. I don't know. Vendorscape. Vendorscape is this. You know, I, I don't, I, I don't want to. It's some real geeky like computer game that I've never. Well, heard of. you know what? It's a geeky computer game for let's just say for people who like to pick up foreclosed properties without having to face the people in the face, you know, look the people in the face who they're foreclosing on. So this is, this is a, you know, there are other platforms like this, but it's where these houses that were unfortunately lost end up, you know, it's this, it's this whole faceless, you know, actually I hate to just give the cheap segue to market basket, but it, it's that whole culture of where the people, you know, effing you don't have to look at you. Yeah. They want to be scabs from afar. It's kind of like uh, using drones, killing people from afar. I get, yeah. I, I, without a doubt. Without a doubt. So uh, we should get into Market Basket. I mean, I don't know if we... Do we want to take a break real quick? Or do you, I don't know. What do you think, Frankie? We've been talking a lot of drive. We could break real quick and come yeah. on back. And ask for some callers? Yeah, they can call us at uh, 617-500-7100. We're going to talk about Market Basket. That's right. The story that uh, Chris wrote in Esquire magazine, The Last Stand for the Middle Class, has taken place in a parking lot in Massachusetts. 
Six one seven five hundred seventy one hundred. Young Jerks. WMF Radio. We'll be back. We will be back, and maybe we'll take your calls too when we get back. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't well, we so do that? Six one seven five hundred seventy one hundred. With Chris Frone coming back soon. WEMF Radio. We're back live. We are the Young Jerks on WEMF Radio. That com. was some uh, Charlie Chaplin with some Tupac, waddle. I believe it was. A little was. Charlie Chaplin waddle? Yeah. Nice. I think, what was it? Was that the government is watching us again? It was uh, Kil- Kiluminati. Oh, that was Kiluminati. Kiluminati. Right. I just got to be listening more, but we got a lively studio here. We got uh, Frank Capone back from vacation. And we also have uh, Chris Farone yep. in studio as well. Yes. Author, journalist, news editor, activist. Man of the people. I thought you were going to say actor. You could be an actor too. No, it's tough. I would That's cast you. Different. Oh, thanks. You're in some movies. You would have an awful, the you would have an awful movie. <laughs> <laughs> You're in some movies too. You're in uh, the Vermin Supreme. Who is Vermin Supreme? Movie, I think right? we're all in the Vermin Supreme. I know. That's true. <laughs> I know. But that's like the do best I get movie to have to be an, in. Do I get to have an IMDb profile? Because I have I'm in one. The, I do. You do? Yeah. yeah. You do. For what? For the, just for, for being in the, the Vermin Supreme? Supreme well, actually, it's Quiet D that I got listed on that one. That one too. And not in any other ones. And Mr. DL's that movie that has. I guess I'm in that one too. I guess. What's the name of uh, Mr. Dale's movie again? Um, the Smoke. Uh, Are we coming up on that? See a green, yeah. Uh, yeah, I can't wait. He's, uh, I'd like to uh, have a screening. screening. We've. Uh, yeah, that would be awesome. That's going to be a good movie. I haven't even seen the movie I'm in. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen any seen of them. I've never seen the Vermin Supreme movie yet. <laughs> that, that movie, uh, the props to Steve the, and, and everybody and everybody involved in that. But, yeah, we were just hanging out with them in the parking lot. Yeah, in lot. the parking lot. And, and there's a lot of stars that, just hanging out around here. Yeah, that's great about this place. Yeah, I, that movie, too, is incredible. Without seeing the whole thing, I can tell already because I saw some of the YouTube clips. Have you seen the, the some of the clips that have come out from that? From what? Vermin- I've Who- seen a, a, a long, a very uh, an uncut version of it, man. You see, you saw the whole thing? Oh yeah, dude. There's, oh. there's a lot. Uh, I I was like, I don't like seeing myself really on screen. Yeah, I don't either. I'm, but I'm, so I'm looking happy. forward to seeing like <laughs> this. The two seconds I might be in it. I'm so happy it's going to succeed because this is like a big one. You know, Vermin. Everybody loves Vermin Supreme, and and the movie. It's just so it's done so well. But I've been in some other documentaries, and it's like. Sometimes I want everybody to succeed, but I'm glad that like nine out of every ten documentaries I do an interview for never see the light of day. <laughs> you know, I'm like I'm now I haven't lost some weight. Now it's like all right, everybody, come all on, right, let's do yeah, let's you do, want to do some documentaries now. Yeah, let's do them. Anybody they can just like, CGI the fat off, can't they? <laughs> I don't know. I'll, Give me some chiseled abs. Oh, uh, dude, you know. do, you, do you ever have one like? Uh, <laughs> speaking of which, like I had one recently where I did one. It was so bad. I just fart, like you farted, but just you farted. Uh, and they it couldn't was, edit no, it because no. the whole it, thing it was, did was just one yeah, long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's basically I farted for like thirty minutes. Like no, I was perfect in terms of content and speaking, but it was like a video type one, and it was just my my, my head the whole time was like yeah, yeah, yeah you did it so for a documentary on not, video. Not, no, not a documentary, just a video I did, like some media. Oh, okay. I'm not even gonna tell where it was, but the funniest thing is like my girlfriend watches this stuff. And she torments me. Like when I if I screw up on something, that's so funny. It's like it's like this whole thing. Like she'll if she's mad at me, she'll send me like a private Facebook message with that like the, the link to it. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you look like. Do you ever have one of those for own? Oh, dude, I'm. Uh, I have this thing where like since I'm you well, know, you guys are in the same boat. I. I I tend to be stoned. <laughs> and I, so I do a lot of, you know, like NPR, the places where you're not supposed to be stoned. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's cool. Oh like they, they tolerate me because they know I, I, I usually do smoke right before I go on, just nerves and stuff. So, But what I do is I know I know that I'm going to, I'll have interesting things to say, but I'll also lose my train of thought. So what I have is, I'll use, and I'll do, no offense, I'll do this with you guys because I'll just think of something. But uh, with them, I'll have like five bullet points of like serious things. And if I completely lose my train of thought, I'll just look at one that we haven't talked about. And I go, and, but you know what? Most importantly, <laughs> and I'll go to that one. And, you know, and it always works. And like if I was doing it with you guys, I'd go just like, most importantly, like, you know, have you been watching 30 Rock? You know, when you're on uh, NPR, do you have to like talk? To, do they give you voice lessons? Like you need to talk like NPR speak. Dude, I've had I've thought a lot about this. <laughs> no, I've, I've thought a lot about this, and first of all, I don't consciously like change the way I talk. Although I don't yell, I certainly you know it's not like when I'm on when I used to go on RKO and yell at conservatives. You know, it's it's 
But it, it is a culture, so it's kind of like, have you, you ever done the social experiment, and you should if you haven't, is bring like three people to a, 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 build, a building and have them all go in an elevator. And even if the people who ride that elevator every day, if the three of you face the like wall instead of the door, like they will all face the wall, right? My point is, it's like, it's, like, <laughs> well, it's true, it's true. People are weird. Are Hurt. Hurting. Hurting. So check this out, though. Wait, with, with the, so when I go into NPR, it's not like I'm going in a Chuck E. Cheese Everyone's yeah. screaming ah! Yeah. Right? It's very calm. Yeah, it's very calm. elevated music it's, going. Oh, dude, it's like very, quaaludes. Yeah, dude, Yanni's blowing people. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the most calm, and I, you know everybody's so cool. And you know, hey, uh, Chris. dude, the the toilets are like are like you know waterless. Everything's just beautiful. It <laughs> smells good. It, everything smells good. So in your, they have this green room that is so quiet, and like the air shut on every door. It's amazing, right? You're so calm. It's it's. By the time you get on, and then everybody who's talking around you is very calm, suddenly everybody sounds like this. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm right in it, man. I'm telling you. If I, if, you know, the, life, the average life expectancy of an NPR uh, uh, personality has got to be at least 10, 20 years you know, longer, longer than, everybody than everyone else in the media. Well, Plus they have cool. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, in the end, that's cool. That's what the market basket thing is. I mean, that was one thing. That we wanted to come back with, yeah. speaking of which, is the market basket. Because you wrote a big article in Esquire magazine, National Outfit. The last stand for the middle class is taking place in a parking lot in Massachusetts. Tell us about this story, Chris. Well, I think the first thing is, I hate to talk too much like shop, you know, insider talk. Uh, but I think it's important in this case is that, you know, I'm a local guy. I love covering local stuff, you know. Uh, uh, sure, I write for National Outlets quite a bit. American Prospect sometimes. Esquire. Uh, a couple places. But, you know, I really enjoy the – it's not the same. When you're covering, like, Congress in D.C., you just don't get the FaceTime. Like, I can walk into any senator or representative's uh, office anytime around here in Beacon Hill. They might not like it, but there's access, and it's, it's, it's tangible to me. But that said, I often pitch articles, you know, about things that are important in Massachusetts, whether it's a company I think is cool. I'll do that for, like, a business magazine like Fast Company. You name it. So if it's a, a musician, uh, you know, like someone like Slain or Terminology who's doing big things, I've written about them for music magazines. With the market basket thing, and uh, this is no lie, I was asked to write about that by Esquire of all places. And they were not the only people <clears throat> who asked me. Uh, just to give you a comparison, the last time that I've been, I was asked to write, just, you know, asked without me proposing yeah. to these magazines was after the marathon bombing. Uh, and it's it's often during tragic times and turmoil and difficult things. You know, we're not going to weigh, I'm not going to weigh it like that. And I'm, please don't anybody think I'm getting rich. I'm a broke writer, no matter which way we look at this. is not yeah. about a money thing. I'm just giving you the example that Market Basket resonates like that. You know, sure, a lot of people in the media maybe are from Massachusetts, from this area. They know it. They vacation here. And that, 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 that didn't hurt uh, with the national. But, you know, the day that my article came out, you know, that was last Tuesday. It, it seemed like you know the day before and that day it really broke out nationally. PBS covered the market basket uh, a fiasco, if you will, and 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 a few other a few others did. And then you know that's just how things are these days. They they grow they they grow like that. My my article seemed to stick with a lot of people more than more than a lot of others. It really uh, well, it was more truthful, more in depth. Well, yeah, exactly. More, real, is it, yeah, more I context. Read it and I, like, I, I didn't even know you wrote it when I first. Yeah, read and it. I hated. You know, I, I know this probably sounded really douchey, but I, I just I think I think it was. You know, a lot of the articles were great, and, and uh, first of all, props to the, all the reporters covering that on the ground. Uh, you know, I often talk trash about Boston. dot com and my. Uh, Media Farm column in Dig Boston, where, uh, where I'm the news editor, but Adam Vaccaro for Boston.com has done unbelievable work. So many people, you know, my article is really, and this is what I've always done. This is not like a new thing for me. It's kind of like build on the work of others. And, you know, uh, I, I've done a lot of that work over the years and, and a lot, uh, I've been on the ground myself, especially with a lot of protest movements. This is a case where I really, you know, I, and I linked to all their articles and there was a foundation there. I said, it's been covered, but I kind of, sometimes things have to be put in perspective. And you know what? If if uh, I gotta say, props to the editors at Esquire for uh, this is it's not exactly Mother Jones, and the fact that they were not only on board but helped me really put it in the framing framework of when people hear about this story, that's how they feel. This is it's so symbolic, it's unbelievable. And I'll tell you, even though I had been following the story not until a week ago today, when I sat down to really start writing that, after collecting and reading everything written about it. Man, I was disgusted. I was just, but I, I was hopeful and disgusted at the same time. 
you know, I'm a pauper, man. You know, I have a decent business sense. And, and when I've put books out on these small scales, I've, I've, you know, made enough money to put the next book out. I'm, I'm but I'm certainly no, uh, you know, uh, Wayne Heisenga, am I dating myself? I don't know. Who's a good businessman? Hey, you whatever. Know. Well, they're all D bags. Yeah, I mean, you know, you I know that guy. Whatever. You know, whoever that guy or that gal, whatever it is. Donald right? Trump. Everyone knows So, him. but, but I'll tell I you, I really okay. didn't know. And I don't think that even my friends who are in business knew that you can operate on that level and with so much equity. You know, and, and then everything, every time I already thought, like, wow, everybody's doing well from the cashiers to the executives. Then I saw another thing, like, wow, and, and the shareholders got paid out of, in, ex, in excess of a billion dollars between the, uh, 2000 and 2010. Like, and no debt. And, yeah. and you own all the real estate. Yeah. And what's it, the problem? You know, the problem is they want to create the debt. They want to create, you know, they get the bankers in they there, want more money. refinance, want sap all this pie. money out through this whole be- debt. Ponzi scheme because that's such a valuable business. You could get so much debt out of that. Well, look at the name of the place they're going to sell to Cerberus. I know. <laughs> I can't believe that. Name. <laughs> they're right. like, it's who, like who I know. Like, picked that I know, name? Like, remember Mr. Show? Like what was it, a Globo Cam? Like yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it, it's unbelievable. That, yeah. but, and and look, that company's been they've had many problems. Yeah. Look, well, look yeah. at what they own: Cerberus. Shaw's, yeah. right? Osco, Jewel Osco, Star Market, Star Market. Uh, what? Um, keep going. Albertsons. Yeah, and uh, uh, Safeway. Safe. I mean, Jesus. Why are these people named Cerberus in control of our food? <laughs> why, why is Cerberus in control? Of why our is food? anybody? Why does any? Why is it not alarm? I think it. Well, actually, I'm glad. I can say I'm glad that it does alarm people. That maybe one day we may have like one grocery store. You know what I mean? Or one one giant one. Like Demolition Man. We'll be eating Taco Bell. Well, that's all right. <laughs> oh, so wow! Suddenly, this doesn't sound so bad. Um, well, not today. We were, we were eating at Veggie Galaxy yes, instead but- of instead of uh, Market Basket. I mean, that's one thing I want to talk about too, because uh, there's a boycott. Like, uh, you know, there's new news this week since your stories even come out about uh, the new letters that they put out. The, the management is job fair coming up this week. They're going to try to replace all these warehouse workers. They're going to th- fire anyone that doesn't come back to work, which is basically all of these warehouse workers. I don't know how many there are. If there's a thousand, they've only fired like 10, 15 people right yeah. now, but now they're going to step it up. The management is saying, are they going to fire a couple hundred people? Five. I don't know if it's a hundred. I don't know if it's 500. Maybe someone can call in and tell us six, one, seven, five hundred, seventy, one hundred. I think we need someone behind the board to take the call, though. But uh, I think there's not a not not a real answer because it uh, they'll fire. Who, we'll see who shows up and who doesn't. Let's say that most don't. I mean, at this juncture, who knows? I mean, it, what the truth is, this is one of the amazing things about getting to put a, a private company under a microscope like this. We never people don't do this. I, I don't I think I don't have to remind people that while there are a lot of amazing small businesses out there, there are also a lot of abusive ones. And and, there, and on top of that, there are a lot of, you know, ones that have been great to their employees where this happens, this happens every day. But, you know, I don't want to, I don't want uh, to take anything away from the market basket struggle, but let's, let's not pretend that this would be the case if they did, if there was no direct to consumer product here. This was a company that made like alarms, and they had twenty five thousand employees. Sadly, uh, and you know, I'm, I guess I'm a hypocrite too because you know I didn't know about. If, trust me, this happens all the time. Yeah, you yeah. Know, the yeah, yeah. Bain Capital, which is based in Boston, I know it's like a cliche to kick them, but they are like the absolute champions of that, uh, particularly around here. And uh, there are some businesses they stick with. They love the for profit school business. Bright Horizons is one of their properties, but they're also ones that they just kind of you know pick up and kick along and strip and. This happens all the time, and it's it's uh, it's sad that it has to be Market Basket. But it, what a great company! What a great company to hold up as an example of what could be if you know. And, and, I know, really. They could even still be greedy, man. I don't understand. I, I don't. Understand. I guess I've been either. so between the three of us. We, who, I can't even imagine. Can we? Can we even pretend to imagine what more than a billion dollars? Them, for, like, <laughs> what, 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 what? I don't. I don't, I don't get why this. They, the, these board members and author S don't just realize that they could actually be heroes if they did the right thing. It's like they don't want to be and still be rich. They don't want to be sitting on a yacht. I know. And well, they still I, could do the same. But this is my thing. Isn't it retaliation? Like, yeah. isn't that retaliation to fire them? Aren't they trying to trying to collectively bargain for something right yeah. now? In a way, like, is you mean as far as legal? You're talking as, about the law now. Yeah, legal. Yeah. Like, oh, that's an interesting. Legally oh, speaking, like, I think from what I understand, there already are cases. So. Yeah, there is a there lawsuit. Is a case, so. At least one big lawsuit that was announced with uh, the employees being fired because they haven't been notified of their stock purchase plan. What's in there? Are they all these little things that you have to follow in the state of Massachusetts when you fire someone. Apparently, the management hasn't followed the law on how to fire someone in Massachusetts, and I wouldn't doubt it because it's 
like these CEOs of this company are, have just been proven so bad. I think it's a it's a new. I mean, really, I always want to make this dictionary. Oh. You know, when they always say like, dude, when you, when if they if you look up stone in the dictionary, it's a picture of you. Yeah. you know, I want a dictionary yeah. like that that just has pictures. It's <laughs> yeah. so like you know, stone yeah. would be yeah. like you know, picture of Mike. Or, you know, what I'm saying? <laughs> but no, yeah, but like really, but this would be stubborn. I mean, it would just straight up be a picture. I would of say stupid Arthur. for that. <laughs> I would say stupid, stuck on oh, dude, stupid. So many people we need to put for stupid. I, yeah. Can we, you know, we can have a whole page of stupid. <laughs> stuck on stupid revenge, maybe. I don't know. It's like it's it's like stuck what's that whole saying? I, I hate these. Uh, you know, you spite your face. What's that whole? Th- the, 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 you spite yeah. your face? Yeah, bite your nose. Yeah, bite your nose. Yeah, your face. Yeah, yeah. Uh, something like that. Cut your. N- yeah. You know, despite your face. Yeah, whatever that's hey, saying. We need to tell to know that one. But is it cut my nose to spite, spite my face? Or bite exactly. my nose to cut my face? That, you said it right the first time. Oh, you're writing a song? <laughs> 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 Maybe awesome. we should sing one. Should we sing a song? I don't know. We should. Wasn't there a song of a uh, of Market Basket? Oh yeah, the Rob song? Pitillo song. We should play the Robbie Pitillo song if we have that one. Yeah, do we he, that he's uh, the DJ here, or, or host, I guess. I, never, I haven't heard it yet. I Rob just, Pitillo experience Monday through Friday. Uh, little known fact: the song, the, the factual base, the, the the fact line in the song is from the Esquire article. Oh really? It is. It is. So you guys are feeding off each other. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad we. I'm glad we fact checked that. It's one. like the cipher. I'm glad we <laughs> so we should talk about some other things too, because um, you know, market basket. We we kind of got into that. What about uh, Dig Boston? Because right now you you cover this every week. What are some stories that have been that you you want to bring up? That oh, yeah. well, that I want to talk about this. What, a, what what? There's no better company to talk about. How I have been at the State House for the past week, and their last day of a two year session was Thursday, man. And they, they are just unbelievable. They are un- unbelievable. They, they behave, they behave as if, as if the speaker of the house was not just an unindicted co-conspirator in a uh. giant scandal that landed three top probation department officials. Uh, looks like they're going to land in prison, but uh, found guilty of various uh, terrible crimes, if you ask me, for public officials. Unindicted co-conspirator means they could be indicted and and tried later, right? Does that? You know, there's a lot of arguments that it's like that it was legal. Listen, the way I see it, I I I, I condense it to this. There's a lot of arguments that the Carmen Ortiz, the U.S. you know, uh, of course, the federal prosecutor in the matter, who you know we all know from Aaron Swartz and all these other cases, yeah. you know, kind of over. You know, there's a lot of prosecutorial overreach. Of course, is a buzzword. And it's like, you know what? Yes, of course there was. There always is. And I, you, of course, when these big cases happen, but that's how they operate. So, you know, uh, really what I'm saying is it was just basically shown the, the, the state's dirty laundry was just waved across the state uh, or the Commonwealth. Uh, they were basically trading favors for jobs. And and then they just they kind of just laughed in our face. So that's part of the way you, we grew up in Massachusetts. So you know, it's like, oh, you know, my cousin, you know, held the sign, you know, and yeah, now, he held the sign. My, now my other the cousin, team. you know, he held the sign. Yeah. And then my other buddy, he's in the union over here, and I can get you a job painting benches for the summer, and that's and, fine. You know and, I mean? and that's how it's always going to be. And I understand that, and even though I'm not from here, and I really do get that. Here's the thing. The fact that it was the probation department is what it was disgusting and egregious to me. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, I, I, everybody sitting in this room knows somebody who's been on probation. I personally was in New York State a long time ago yeah. uh, when I was in college, some stupid shit I did uh, and uh, nonviolent. <laughs> and no, really. And it's I think it's important to note. And and, and I got to say, I had uh, in my years on probation, I had a good probation officer and a bad one. And I tell you. What a how bad a bad probation officer can be, how awful they can be for your life. This is a situation we are at 140 plus percent capacity. Our prisons in this this exactly. state, we have horrible recidivism rates, and you know uh, it, it's just despicable that that a, a patronage position, that a job that's going to be holding somebody's future in you know in its hands can would just be given this you know nonchalantly. And uh, you know I know that a lot of the old there's a lot of. Uh, uh, artificially tan former state officials who are you know nodding their head uh, if they, when they hear me say this kind of thing. But you know what? I don't care. They're yeah. wrong, and I'm glad that they get a lot of shit for it. And I wish that more of them went to prison. And another thing about the state house too in Dick Boston, uh, you posted a picture which I really like because I've been at the state house, 
and film some of the state house hearings and gotten approval and tried to get approval and then shut down and dealt with just just the ridiculousness of being there and them trying to stop us from recording them. Um, you you took a picture and there was like Therese Murray was shutting you down. Did you have a flash? Like what was going on in that picture? And, and how do you feel about that? Tell us about this. Oh, it's, it's, it's interesting. You know, it's funny because I, I about 10, eight, 10 years ago, I was actually full time at the state. I was covering for several different newspapers around the state at one point and and then for the dig, and then the Phoenix, I was, you know, not full time there, but always at the state. House. So like, I'm no rookie at the state house. I'm not, you know, respect to the guys who cover it and the, and the women who cover it every day. They're the real experts. They were the real baseline information. State house news service. They don't get the props they deserve. I love them. We wouldn't even know what happens in the state if not yeah, for them. Exactly. Um, I and I, I use a lot of their work. But my point is, I've been around there. But I guess I just, I know I'm not a photographer. So before all this technology, I wasn't always packing a camera. Now I have it. And you know what? I didn't know. God damn. We're not, they're allowed to trade jobs. They're allowed to do all this. We're not allowed to take pictures from the balcony of the Senate or the House. Okay? Now, the first one with the, the picture you're talking about, that was uh, during the uh, charter school bill debate, and I got this. I almost got thrown out of the Senate chamber or out of the, off the balcony <laughs> for, for taking a couple pictures. That I did have the flash on. And then the, just the other day on Thursday, on the final day of session, I was... I was at the house. Now, this is the last day. You know, the, the common political, the narrative in the news is that they're, they're, they work until, the, you know, past midnight. And, yeah. And, and well, it's true. Yeah, they do. But you know what? Guess what they were doing all day? Sleeping. They spent two <laughs> hours that I watched them honoring Ray, former Boston mayor Ray Flint for like, I think it was, I think it was like 40 years in, since he worked at the state house. Something crazy like just they're running down the clock, dude. So like this whole BS narrative that they were working hard, you know, yes, a lot of them do work hard and there are aides behind the scenes uh, putting together these bills. I get it. But you know what? This whole baloney of working to midnight, it's all show. It's all political theater. Uh, trust me. I, and I painted the scene. And my point being, they did not want a picture taken of the scene, even though they had a professional photographer on the floor. That's what I'm talking taking about. Taking pictures of uh, all the members uh, who would who are willing to be uh, taking uh, have their picture taken with Ray Flynn, of course, who endorsed Scott Brown. So there's a lot of Democrats here. Huh. We're running who who couldn't get they, they they saw Ray Flynn and they saw the photographer and they might as well dove across <laughs> dove across the podium. <laughs> That's the worst thing though, that they, they get access but we don't. I mean it's it is so obvious right there in the photography thing that they can take pictures, but we can. It's not. It's not fair. Not that, unless that's we kiss our their house ring. as much yeah. as theirs. And we have to go. If we want to take pictures, we have to ask permission. To we have to call ask. ahead of time. That we have do? to. Who do you call? You for, have to call the committee. You have to call the committee, or you have to sign in and ask in the very. And, and if you ask the day of, usually they'll deny you. That's most of the time. You, you usually have to you call tape the whole thing, right? You like to go tape the whole thing. I, I, at certain times, I did tape certain people's testimonies and things like that for medical, definitely because I knew it was a. You know, when you no, got people in wheelchairs coming in, and, and these guys are ignoring them, you're uh, actually they weren't even ignoring them anymore. They were humoring them. They were like, "Oh yes, we agree, but uh, we won't do anything." The children, unconscionable. And I, I also the say this, they've just passed. Uh, uh, it looks like the the House and the Senate are each going to spend twenty million dollars updating their chambers and the Senate. The Senate, while they're doing it. They're moving into the former records room, which, by the way, don't get me started on that. There's no more records room. All right. <laughs> what? No, don't really. Yeah. I, what are they going to do open with the Are they going to put it all online? Have fun. Are they going to put it online? They're, open they, source? They do all right with it, but not everything is there. In this, we should a, have an open a, source a state house. We should have everything online. Everything should be recorded. Everything should be available. We need an open source government. All kinds of dead links. Like a lot we, of the stuff is even on there, like technology, the emergency tech, acts, right? you know, of like 1950. Yeah. You can't find that shit on the yeah. internet. So anyway, anyway you have to go and read a book that's falling apart. It's like a little, it's a book. It's like probably like four inches thick and you get a leaf through it. For what? And for the emergency acts of 1950. Which, which, which basically it's like the martial law rules for oh, Massachusetts. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So they, they so they're moving. The Senate is moving into while they redo the Senate for twenty million. They're moving the senators into the records room, which they first also have to redo so they can move in there. And Senate President Ter- Therese Murray said uh, to the Globe when, that they're not going. Basically, nobody's the public's not going to be able to fit in this room, so they're going to put televisions on the outside to broadcast 
the Senate. Yeah, they're basically going to get to meet in a closed room, and we'll have to rely on that technology because we all know it's not going to work. Oh, the feed's not working today. Yeah, dude. Whoops. And and you know what? If they they can do that, they can put it on local television. They should like and put it on the internet. (laughs) Oh, good luck with that. I know, right? But yeah, I mean, dude, I think it's so obscene. They it's going to you know it's going to be the equivalent to like that that thing they rolled around when you were in elementary school. VCR on it. They're going to get those. They're going to get those. You know what I mean? Like, dude, it's it's just absolute craziness. Like, can you believe that? Yeah, anyway, I can't believe she that. goes. She goes. Well, what are you gonna do? Okay, you want to? I was gonna do make a hun- a list of a hundred ideas. <laughs> you have in the Boston comedy you yeah. have, here. You can have you all come on the young jerks. You know, you name it. <laughs> we got room over here for him. Just pull the doors off. Yeah. Unbelievable. Uh, I mean, it's just like it's just. Some goon it's gonna be like the watching door. the fireworks. Like you know, in the river there, you got the big uh, screens. You watch. Uh, <laughs> they, uh, <laughs> they pump the music in. Yeah. They just stole another twenty million from me. Oh my oh. god, it's unbelievable. It really is. So, uh, <clears throat> there's some other things too. I mean, uh, I don't All know. Kinds of other stuff going on. All kinds on, of stuff know? going on. Uh, Did you know about the secret cup? The Franco? secret cup. Do you know about the secret East cup? East Coast. Yeah, you know about it, right? East Coast secret oh. cups coming. What, what is it? It's a uh, cannabis cup. Type it's kind of. Thing? It's like uh, cannabis pup cups have been going on for a lot of years. Now they have the secret cups, which are uh, for extracts. Dabs, oils, yeah. hashes. I hope they have them on a giant bed. Yeah, I know, right? Walk around for 20 minutes in a circle. Yeah. It's just a padded room. In the yeah. circle you it's a at. secret because even those people who are planning it don't know where it is. Well, exactly. <laughs> there, uh, we do know where, somewhat where it is today. And we, they have it in Rhode Island today. It's come to Rhode Island for the first time. Our friend, who, a good friend of ours, Bobby Nuggs, he... Uh, He's a friend of KLP's and a friend of mine for for quite a few years. He runs Relief Magazine. Well, no, I don't know. I think Andrew actually runs it, but Bobby works over at Relief Magazine. And Bobby won, like, the big award at the Secret Cup, and it was like a national thing. And he's got a lot of friends and fans now because he won that. And That's now cool. they're bringing it to Rhode Island today. Today? Yeah. Is think, Boston? When's Boston? Then? I don't know. I mean, I think this is as close as we're getting to it right now, you know? All right, all right. Oh, I want we to got the Freedom Next. Rally coming up. I know. Saturday. Oh, well, let's talk about uh, Stephen Ears' article in Boston Magazine. What do you think oh, yeah, about the, the, the fine? I mean, it's funny because like, I, I already have a plan. I'm off to Steve, I, but I, 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 I uh, kind of just been thinking about this and figured let you guys cross that bridge when you get there. Well, I, I've already got an idea. Well, what, what it, so basically. I'm going to get to ask for the fine. I want to, I like, I'm speaking, right? They just, uh, Boston Freedom Rally invited me to speak, and I'm going to speak for KLP. And I'm going to speak about him. And about the relationship we had and what we did together and, and some of those things. And uh, the big year he came on, Secret Cup is August 9th. Oh, it's next week. Thank you. So we're wrong. It's not this week. But uh, unregular, I mean, uh, I'm saying it's unregular. Like so secret. WEMF Radio is actually going to be there live, so we know. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, word? Yeah. So it's August 9th. I was wrong. Excuse me. Miller. But uh, at the Freedom Rally... I'm going to be speaking about uh, KOP, as I said, and the smoking fine, which you talked about, is the Boston police and the park rangers are going to enforce a smoking fine at the Boston Freedom Rally. And I'm saying, like... You think they really will? Well, I think they will. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They've already said they're going to. I think, like, a few people will. Well, the the thing is, this is... And when you're a type A male with big muscles, you can't say something and then go back on it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you gotta do it, and brother. they're gonna do it, America. They're gonna do America. it. They've done it before. They, they're trying to search, and they're gonna try to push it and try to illegally search people and get some dealers busted. This is what they do. They do illegal things. They detain people, and uh, well, we we need, definitely need to have the ACLU there. We definitely need to be videotaping the police and the park rangers as they do this. And I'm saying, like, I'm gonna go on stage and I'm gonna smoke the biggest fucking joint. And I want my name and my address right behind me and say, send me a ticket. Send me a $350 ticket. Like, I, send me it. Send me that's, it. And the name the of my too. friend who died for this on this common, like, send me. Send me the ticket. Yeah, two tickets. Yeah, whatever it is, send me it. Send it. My name is Mike Crawford. You call me Mike Can, anything. whatever you want to send me the ticket. 125 Portland. You know? it's That's it. Like, let's get a fine. It's just completely ridiculous. Let's see if they selectively enforce it against me. Of course they're going to select it. I mean, probably not against you, no. Yeah. I doubt the cops going to walk up on the stage and... and well, will you know, they, they do it after the fact, though, you know when the video's out? Will they, they, would do think it like, be like an will, they, will they mail it a week later? No. When the video's I, out? I don't think and I'm taunting them? Ticket. I got to say, I was impressed with, with the Boston Police Department for not making any arrests during the uh, uh, pro-Palestine protest. There were 23 uh, activists laid out in the street for several hours. Well, they were there for hours? Yeah, they then they waited it out, and the cops just, you know, they handled it pretty well, and 
It was a. I mean, they had other things to deal with. There was pretty much two groups of people that were going at each other. So, uh, but that that does sound yeah, a little disconcerting. Figured, like I, that, I, that this is going on in Boston. That they, they, that you see groups of people now. We're talking about pa- people who are pro Palestine and people who are pro Israel fighting each other, basically not fist fights, but yelling. Well, each they other. would be fist fights. Yeah. Cops weren't there. You know, it's scary. But uh, you know, and I guess I always put uh, as as my friend of mine used to say, uh, pigs in black blanket statements. Pigs and blanket statements. I, uh, since I do that, I should give credit where it's due. Yeah, definitely. And the Boston Police Department definitely did a. You know, they've done a good job of keeping those protests uh, uh, under not under wraps, but whatever. You know, uh, but under, I just get somewhat yes. like uh, amiable. Yes. The, yeah. <laughs> I don't even know the word for it. They've they've, they've avoid, they kept, uh, avoided pandemonium. And uh, but yeah, we'll see what happens in the future. Definitely, I'm not going to go as far as to say I see a, a huge protest movement on the horizon, but. There's definitely, there's absolutely more, uh, you know, there are a lot of feelings in, in the air, I guess I would say. Well, it's it's insanity what's going on over there right now. You know, well, between, I mean, not just there, not just with that. I'm seeing in general between that market basket, a lot of international issues. Ebola, seeing, you know, yeah, uh, Ebola. You're, uh, uh, of course, the minimum wage battle, which I don't think, I hope does not end here with our promise of eleven dollars an hour in 2017. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy! I'm so excited that inflation is going to adjust. <laughs> and I'm going to need it's going to be the same as getting paid ten dollars an so hour. So silly, right dude! And you know what? That everybody is back home campaigning on that. Like, uh, oh well, oh <laughs> dude. Like, I understand that it's wicked hard to fix the real problem, which is, like, the banking system and all that. Like, it's easier to just raise the minimum wage. But, like, oh, we're going to raise the minimum wage in five years. I know. And it's like, well, uh, yeah, we it, need it now like, if you're going to do it. It's I know. called Deval Patrick is running for president of the United States. That's a horrible idea. Oh, it is. But I'm saying, a lot of... President. <laughs> a lot of the, uh, a lot of the thing. Well, you know what? It'll be great for the reporters around here. Although I, didn't, I know, right? I can't imagine anybody ever getting behind a Massachusetts candidate for president. Not since ever Dukakis. Again. That's what do you mean? It's been two since Dukakis. I know, but just it's like why? Like even, I think like the other two after him have had that like. Statement. I, I, yeah, it's yeah. It's they always bring up Dukakis, right? They <laughs> all, they all. Even Mitt Romney, who has nothing to do with Dukakis, they're like, oh, yeah, the last one was Dukakis. <laughs> 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 you know. I don't know. People aren't going to elect someone that puts a dog in their roof. I know. Yeah, I know. That, well, was that was true. That was yeah, wrong. That's what you just said, right? no, they, can, they can invent a story about anybody having a dog in their roof. Uh, did you see that guy at the RNC that was driving around with the dog on the roof? <laughs> no. He was driving in circles around the oh, place. He had a big dog and stuffed oh, animal in the, in the roof. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Some of the most amazing protests. Uh, uh, I, I was almost said something I don't want to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you guys later. Well played. I'll tell you guys on the. You have to listen to the after. Uh, you know, yes, extra the, minutes. Yeah, yeah. Young, young jerks after jerks. Breath. the young jerks after hours. There the you young go. jerks off time. I, sometimes are the best conversations too. <laughs> Just after sometimes, the show. Yeah, no, usually, like we should start filming the stuff that happens in the pocket line. Well, I think we might tonight. We got, we got our own here. Yeah, you know why not? We can. And wrap Frankie's it up. back, and we got That's a lot right. to talk about. We didn't even get into weed too, because like we got to end the show. I love that saying oh, that. Yeah. We didn't even get into weed. We do have to end the show. Look at that. Time yeah, flies. The time flies. The uh, smoking in the girls' room crew is coming in. I see Kamalita here. I see the attorney Cindy. I see Valerie Malta waving to us. The queen Hello. of pop. Beautiful. She's beautiful. Look at her. Look at Kamalita too. Ooh. What a smart <laughs> idea! All so the stony I'm shows in trouble. They look pretty yeah, but they're not. They're not really stony show. Like they're like actually pretty straight in some ways, oh, except yeah? for like a couple of them. They're like more like a, a cross section of awesome women. Oh, cool. and, and there are a couple of them who are more in our in our uh, with the weed camp. Yeah, weed camp, but some are not. Canographic. <laughs> yeah, they're like a cross section. Smoking in the girls' room coming up. I think they're talking about Ebola tonight, too. Nice. Hey, wait, can you catch me up? Don't fly. On, uh, Ebola. Oh, Ebola. Ebola. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We, we no don't want to get there because the we're running out of time. Really, like, did right. nothing. Yeah. Oh, okay. And that's what well, Let them get into it. <laughs> I want to talk about the, the weed thing before we go. Cause what's, we, what's going on? John Green. Greenway Wellness Center needs your help. They're still fighting for it. They met with the DPH. They're going to continue to meet with the DPH. There's a lot more going on. I can't even talk about that. I know, um, but they need help in Cambridge because they were basically going to get approval in Cambridge through the zoning and the city council. And now it's, I think they're still going to get it, but it's closer. What was the technical reason they did not get theirs? Because of the money situation, the banking, the federal government uh, has threatened the banks for a long time, taking any medical marijuana dispensary money. And the bank that they were in, as soon as it was announced that they won the license. Well, they that they got to the second round for the licensed lottery, 
the bank told them they had to take the money out. They put it into private accounts, uh, and the DPH said that they didn't have enough money and they didn't follow the rules, which DPH set up. Uh, the, the DPH clearly specifies that money has to be put in shoe boxes and know, underneath right? the bed. I know. And they have to be Skechers well, shoes. Yeah. Like, you know, it's it, it, so it, crazy. Slim. I know. What planet is this? Meanwhile, meanwhile, get me meanwhile, I'll get this too, is there was a bank, there's a bank, I believe it's Century Bank, we'll find out who the bank is, but there is one bank that is actually saying, we'll take your money. And DPH knew about it and didn't tell Greenway or any of the other dispensaries. Like, they're basically not helping the dispensaries. And Greenway is now working with DPH. We'll see if it works out. If it doesn't, it's boo on DPH. We'll but, you're allowed to use a, but you're allowed to use a bank that's foreclosed on, you know, with robo-signed on yeah. Massachusetts customers. But you're allowed to use a bank, you know, that, that, that has, you know, made homeless, uh, uh, untold numbers of families homeless in the Bay State. It's unconscionable, dude. I hate to sound like a crazy person, but it's true. It's like the, the banks that, you know, I, I have this policy of not digging into all the applications, but let's just say that a couple of the applications, at least one of which I'm pretty sure made it past the last step, that money is all from, uh, pri- uh, you know, big, disgusting... Uh, business. Uh, yes, bad business. Yeah. I'm not, I don't want to get into I'm not going to say who it is, yeah, but I saw that, it. too. I'm, I laughed. It's like, oh, you actually, okay. let, you actually let one of the bad people in, and you got so rid you know of a exactly lot of the good enough. people. We never even talked about yeah. this. So, yeah. I so, mean, I don't want to talk th- about Yeah, them. because I have that policy, too. Like, yeah. I think, you know what? If you, if people are doing it, maybe their heart's even in the right place. Yeah. Who knows? And, and you know what? Their d- money is needed. So... Um, you know, the, hopefully the people who are actually, actually, we're going to have dispensaries. I'm sure the people who are working in those uh, venues are going to actually care about patients. Uh, just the way I'm sure I think most farmers, we could agree, even most pharmacists at CVS, they may work for CVS, but they, they do care about you to a certain degree. I think, you know, you're not going to go really go into that. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe people just like counting shit. But my point, <laughs> yeah. my point is, uh, I think we need, yeah, we need to deal with. Uh, the, I've got 15 purple ones. I know, right? <laughs> You know, like hopefully, the hopefully uh, Greenway gets the support. We're looking uh, September. There's going to be another hearing. We need a bunch of Cambridge residents to come out and support Greenway so they get their sure we'll permit in Cambridge to open. Make sure you get. Make sure we write about that the week before. Then we will. Very cool. Oh, and I think our show's over, but I'm looking to see where Dave Crespo is. Where is he? <laughs> What's he's a fan for? We, fan. we have so much it's going on because you got the smoking in the girls' room crowd coming up, and he's got to like get like a lot of microphones ready. And I'm trying to figure out like. Are we done? Because it's supposed to be six fifty-five. Where is Dave Crespo back? It's all right. We're gonna just keep, we keep on talking. Going. We're gonna keep talking. We'll, we'll keep talking until Dave comes we're back. Get, we're exactly. ready to end our show, but but uh, we'll props we'll to Veggie Galaxy for the for yeah. The we got thank, thank you to Chris Ferron for coming in here well, from Dig Boston. Read, read uh, Dig Boston, Boston. Pick them up. You know they look this. These issues just look great. Props to um, you know the whole team over there. This issue is the midsummer issue. A lot of uh, you know cool stuff to do, and also we have a uh, you know. Rad, some new fiction in there, some uh, some wrap ups of some of the stuff we just talked about. All these protests going on, so check it out. Awesome, dig Boston. Check it out every week on newsstands, free and blunt truth and blunt truth. Yeah, my column. Check yes. that out if you don't. We're the Young Jerks every Saturday at six p.m. We got to say goodbye. Goodbye. See you next week. W E M F Radio.